Good morning. Welcome back, everyone. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is Tuesday, December 27th, 2022. It's 9 07 a.m., which means I'm seven minutes late. I had no idea it had gotten so late. I did sit down in time, but, um, God, <laughs> excuse me, got a little bit distracted. So, anyway, how is everyone today? What are we doing today, Allison? So, guess what? Just like that, today we're at the end of 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. So tomorrow we're going to start the book of, um, we're going to start Timothy tomorrow. All right. But this ver this chapter today is only 18 verses. So even though I'm a little bit late, hopefully I won't run too, too late today. Good morning on Instagram. Um, so I'm going to pray and then we're going to get right into the reading of the word and then see what God has to say to us this morning. All right. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for waking each and every one of us up this morning. Oh God, I thank you that we are in our right minds. I thank you that we have eyes to see and ears to hear. Oh God, Father, I thank you that you continue to keep your hand upon us. Lord, I thank you for the hedge of protection that is around our lives that cannot be broken, cannot be penetrated and cannot be compromised in any way. Oh God, Father, I thank you for blessing blessing us, oh God. Father, I thank you for bringing us through the month of December, Lord. Today is my son's birthday. God, I thank you for his life. Father, I thank you for keeping your hand upon him and protecting him, Lord. I pray that you will order his steps, thoughts, actions, words, and deeds. Father, raise him up to be a mighty man of God, a mighty man of valor. Give him a heart after you to love and to serve you, oh God, with his whole heart all the days of his lives. Father, I lift up our bloodlines, both maternal and paternal, from the oldest to the youngest, oh God. Father, Father, I say, have your way in our lives. Use us how you want to use us, oh God. Father, I pray that you will show us your glory in greater measure, that you will use our lives for your glory, oh God. And I stand to declare it is a new day, oh God. We command our mornings. We command this day to bless us. We command our weeks to bless us, oh God. And as we prepare to go into 2023, I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, the best is yet to come. Our futures are bright, oh God. Father, I thank you that all things are working together for our good. Father, I thank you that we will not lack any good thing, oh God, because you, Lord, are our shepherd. So we shall not lack, we shall not want, we shall not be in need, oh God. Father, I thank you for your angels that you have given charge over us, Father. Forever keep your angels going out ahead of us, oh God, to lead us and guide us. Father, forever keep angels posted behind us to be our rear guard, Lord. Lord, let angels surround us each and every day, oh God. Father, I pray that as we go into 2023, everything will be in divine alignment. God cause us to operate in divine timing. Oh God, let goodness, grace, and mercy be our portion. Let them follow us all the days of our lives. Oh God, Father, we just thank you for what you're doing. We do not take it for granted. Oh God, Father, let our bodies operate at 100% capacity. Oh God, Father, let every need be met. Let our storehouses be full in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray. Amen and amen. Good morning, Kimberly. How are you? All right, so today we're finish up, finishing up 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. And I think I'm going to read it here out of the Amplified. Amen and amen. Good morning, Elsa. Good morning. Grace and peace. All right, so 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 in the Amplified. The title is Exhortation. In the ESV, it's um, there were actually three titles here. Pray for us. Warning against idleness and benediction. Thank you so much. Thank you. He's grown up to be a young man. I'm telling you, Kimberly, as these kids get older and older, I think we get younger and younger. That, I'm standing on that. I'm getting younger and younger as they get older and older. All right. Let's, um, let's read the word this morning. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 out of the Amplified Translation, and it reads, Finally, brothers and sisters, pray continually for us that the word of the Lord will spread rapidly and be honored, triumphantly celebrated and glorified just as it was with you. And pray that we will be rescued from perverse and evil men, for not everyone has the faith. 
but the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen you, setting you on a firm foundation and will protect and guard you from the evil one. Thank you, Jesus. We have confidence in the Lord concerning you that you are doing and will continue to do the things which we command. May the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the steadfastness and patience of Christ. Now, we command you, believers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and by his authority that you withdraw and keep away from every brother or sister who leads an undisciplined life and does not live in accordance with the tradition and teaching that you have received from us. For you yourselves know you ought to follow our example because we did not act in an undisciplined or inappropriate manner when we were with you. We were never idle or lazy, nor did we avoid our duties. Nor did we eat anyone's bread without paying for it, but with labor and hardship, we worked night and day to pay our own way so that we would not be a financial burden on any of you for our support. Not because we do not have a right to such support, but we provided our own financial support to offer ourselves as a model for you so that you would follow our example. For even while we were with you, we used to give you this order. If anyone is not willing to work, then he is not to eat either. Indeed, we hear that some among you are leading an undisciplined and inappropriate life doing no work at all, but acting like busybodies meddling in other people's business. Now, such people we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to settle down and work quietly and earn their own food and other necessities, supporting themselves instead of depending upon the hospitality of others. And for the rest of you believers, do not grow tired or lose heart in doing good, but continue doing what is right without weakening. That's verse 13. Now, if anyone in the church does not obey what we say in this letter, take special note of that person and do not associate with him so that he will be ashamed and repent. Do not regard him as an enemy, but keep admonishing him as a believer, a believing brother. Now, may the Lord of peace himself grant you his peace at all times and in every way that peace, spiritual well-being that comes to those who walk with him regardless of life's circumstances. The Lord be with you all. That's 16. 17. I, Paul, write you this final greeting with my own hand. This is the distinguishing mark in every letter of mine that shows it is genuine. It is the way I write my handwriting and signature. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. Amen and amen. So this was short and sweet. Um, and I like it. So here, what do I have in my notes this morning? I wrote, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, so let me go. I didn't write this in my notes, but as I read it, this struck me. But the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen you, strengthen you, setting you on a firm foundation and will protect you and guard you from the evil one. So here, the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen us. He will protect us and he will guard us from the evil one. So this is the hedge of protection that this is how I'm is resonating with me that I pray, always pray for this hedge of protection around us, right? That cannot be broken, cannot be penetrated, cannot be compromised. The Lord is faithful. He will strengthen us when we're weak, when we're tired, right? And this chapter talks about do not grow weary in well-doing. But we know that sometimes we get run down, we get worn down. Life, there's a lot, right? We have a lot going on. We're working, we're taking, up, taking care of our homes, we're raising families, we have a lot on our plate sometimes, right? So you can get worn down. It says God will strengthen you. So when you feel like you're being drained, press into the Lord. Let the Lord refresh you. Let the Lord strengthen you. Spend time with him. Ask God for strategies. Lord, show me how to work smarter, not harder. God, give me another strategy. Show me how I can do this in less time, but 
with a spirit of excellence that it will still represent you well, represent me well. But God, I'm tired. I have a lot on my plate. The Lord will strengthen you, setting you on a firm foundation. He will protect you and guard you from the evil one. Now, I'm going to take this as he will protect you and guard you from the evil one the enemy, and then he will guard you and protect you from the other people walking around us, right? Sometimes people don't always have the best intentions. Now, you know what? I closed it, but I read this in the message and it said something to the effect of not all believers are true believers, all right? Like not meaning not everyone <coughs> And unfortunately, right, we're not on the same level of maturity. We don't all have the same motives. And so sometimes there are people that walk among us that really don't mean us good. They don't want to see us succeed. They don't want to see us thrive, right? So it says he will pro protect and guard you from the evil one. So I'm going to take that as the in the natural, those around us who don't want us to succeed. And then the enemy who's always plotting and trying to hinder us, right? All right, it says, we have confidence in the Lord concerning you that you are doing and will continue to do these things we command. All right, down to verse six. It says, now we command you believers in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and by his authority that you withdraw and keep away from every brother and sister who leads an undisciplined life and does not live in accordance with the tradition and teachings that you have received from us. So here in the Amplified, it uses the term undisciplined. And in the King James, it uses is the word disorderly. Stay away from those who are undisciplined and disorderly, right? People that are not living for the Lord, people who are still just doing everything and anything, um, their life does not represent God. Stay away from those people. Now, this is when I always pray for God, give us a, a divine separation from the wrong people, places, and things, Right. We have to ask God and help us because sometimes we have to separate from people that we were once very close with. And sometimes we have to separate from people in our bloodlines. And that can become challenging. Right. But we have to ask God. We want to we want to be obedient and not be around people who are going to try to pull us down um, and get us off track. Right. That's my stomach. Can you hear my stomach? One day I was always talking about that. I was on here, right? Like, I think it was like all summer I would come on in the morning and my stomach was always growling. And I kept saying, are y'all hearing my stomach? Well, I watched a couple of weeks ago. I watched the playback, Kimberly, and you could loudly hear my stomach growling. Well, my stomach is growling. I might have to get something to eat when I finish here. Okay. So we have to separate ourselves from people who are undisciplined and disorderly. Now, in the natural, my father always used to say, stay away where there's chaos, where the kids were acting up and the kids were fighting. That's not where you want to be, right? So you don't want to even be around that kind of stuff and get swept up in a whole lot of foolishness and nonsense. So we need to be um, very aware of our surroundings and the company that we keep. And we have to be intentional about separating ourselves. Please get something to eat after this one. Wasn't that terrible, Kimberly? All right. Verse six. Okay, verse. Okay, so then he goes on and he's talking about not being idle and not being lazy. And not really kind of in our terminology, we would say kind of like not be, don't be a freeloader. Don't just try to live off of everybody else and expect everybody supposed to pay your way, right? If you don't work, he's saying here, if you don't work, you're not to eat. But you're not supposed to sit back and be lazy and think everybody else is supposed to support you while you do nothing. Right. And so he talks about the example that they said. We were not a financial burden. We came and we preached the word to you, but we also worked. We did not just sit back and expect you all to just feed us and supply all of our needs. We continued to work. It says, nor did we eat anyone's bread without paying for it. So even, so this says to me, so even if you did feed me, I compensated you for it, for the effort, for your food, right? But the labor and hardship, we worked night and day to pay our own way so that we would not be a financial burden on any of you for our support. Not because we did not have a right to such support. Now we talked about this before where um, he teaches about 
giving back to those people who feed into you, right? So it should be reciprocal. If he feeds, if a person feeds into you spiritually, you're supposed to feed back into the kingdom and into the work um, financially, right? But he says, we didn't want to be a financial burden. We didn't want to set the wrong precedent. We didn't want to give people the wrong ideas. So we paid our own way. This way that you would realize that you too have to work in order to eat. Don't sit back and expect everybody else to just pay your way while you do nothing, right? Okay. So he says, indeed, we did hear some of you are leading undisciplined and inappropriate lives, doing no work at all, but acting like busybodies, meddling in other people's business. Yes, because when you're idle and you have no business of your own, what happens sometimes? You start to mind other people's business because you have nothing going on in your own life. But he's saying, don't be like this. You need to be about your business. You need to work. You need to earn your way. Okay. Then it says here, verse 13. Now, this is the verse that we all are very familiar with, right? I'm going to read it out of the Amplified. I think I left the King James up. Okay. And as for the rest of you believers, do not grow tired or lose heart in doing good, but continue doing what is right without weakening. Now, we know this as, but ye brethren, be not weary in well-doing. Let's see what the ESV says. As for you, brothers, do not grow weary in doing good. If anyone does not obey what we say in this letter, take note of that person and, and have nothing to do with him that he may be ashamed. Do not regard him as an enemy, but warn him as a brother. All right. So first, do not grow weary in be, in doing good. Now, we could grow weary in, in the natural, right? We can get tired sometimes, right? You're like, you're trying to do good. You're trying to help people, but they don't want to listen. They don't want to learn, right? And we get fed up. That is very frustrating. But it says, do not grow weary in doing good. If anyone does not obey what we say in this letter, take note of that person and have nothing to do with them. Because now here, this is just, <coughs> what I'm hearing here is, this is somebody that's willingly disobedient. This is a spirit of rebellion, so you've been taught, because it says if anyone does not obey what we say in this letter, so you've been taught, you're, I'm giving you your instructions, I'm giving you codes of conduct, right? I like to call them that, that sometimes. Now, if you hear it and you decide that you don't want to obey, you just want to go off and do your own thing, you're willfully and willingly disobedient and rebellious. This does have nothing to do with him. That he may be ashamed. So if now if you don't want to work, we've told you you need to work to keep yourself up, to pay for your bills, right? We've already told you. Don't try to live and mooch off of everybody else. You need to go earn money for yourself. Support yourself. But if you don't want to do that, leave this person alone. It says that he may be ashamed. But don't regard him as an enemy, but warn him as a brother. So that means, I agree with you, Alison. It's, it's right. It is a spirit of rebellion. In the natural, we see it all the time. You you give somebody instructions or people read instructions, even things like you see a sign, a stop sign, and people don't go, they don't stop at the stop sign. They just go right through it, right? You saw the stop sign, you saw the instruction, and you decided you were not going to obey it. Just will, willingly, Right? And so we deal with people like this. They know the rules, but they feel like they're above the law. They don't have, the rules don't apply to them. It's a spirit of rebellion. And here, when you're, this is me, this is my thought. When you're willing to be disobedient in small areas, that already gives me a glimpse into your character and your personality. Now I have to start to figure out what else you're doing. What other rules are you going to break? Right. OK, so it says take note of that person, that he will be ashamed, but don't treat him as an enemy. Warn him as a brother. Because sometimes you just people just need a wake up call. They need a reminder that you're not doing what you're supposed to do and you need to you need to get it together. Right. So if you come at people too hard initially. Now, I'm, I'm talking about initial. This is the way I operate. Initially, I will speak to you, like it says, as a brother, right? 
And I just need to give you a reminder. I need to give you a heads up that you know what you're slipping. You're not doing what you're supposed to do. But now when you continue to be disobedient and continue to be rebellious, you know, that, that's where the frustration is. And then sometimes you have to really make a hard call on how you're going to handle that with, with wisdom, right? But it's telling us we really need to bring correction initially with a spirit of love, right? Warn people. But unfortunately, we have hard-headed people in the world who don't want to listen. They don't want to take instruction. And so then we have to, you know, use wisdom on how we how we handle that. But I like that this says stay away from the disorderly. Stay away from those that are operating in a spirit of rebellion. Stay away from those that are undisciplined because that rubs off. That can rub off on you. Right? When you're constantly with people who are lazy, who are constantly putting things off. <laughs> Let me speak to myself here. Putting things off for tomorrow. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll get to that tomorrow. Um, but those things can become habitual. They're habit forming sometimes, right? So if you're trying to be on your grind and you're trying to grow your business and you're trying to do, you, you're trying to lose weight and you're with somebody who's undisciplined in their eating and they want to constantly take you to the buffet and they know you're trying to lose weight, Maybe you might not go to the buffet with them, right? Maybe you have to use a little bit of wisdom because they're undisciplined in their eating. Now, you know, I like to eat. So I'm talking to myself in that example. I can't hang out with somebody who wants to be in the buffet all the time and who does not want to go to the gym because I need to monitor my eating and I need to be in the gym. So I can't hang around somebody if I keep saying I want to. My goal is to be in the gym five days a week. I can't hang around somebody who's going to constantly say, you don't have to go to the gym. Don't worry about it. Start next week. You know, start at the beginning of the month. And they're constantly talking me out of my goals and talking me out of what I know is best for me and what I need to do. So that's the danger of hiding, of, of hanging around and associating with people who are undisciplined, disorderly. Right. And it warns us against us who are idle, who don't want to work. You know, and that's why they say you don't need to always be the smartest person in the room. You need to hang around people who are smarter than you, wiser than you, who have accomplished more than you. People who have reached already accomplished where you want to go. People who can mentor you, who can pour into you, who can teach you. But if you are always around people who um, are not trying to go where you're trying to go, and people who, you know, cannot pour back into you. There's never anybody to build you up. You're just constantly pouring out, pouring out, pouring out, pouring out. And you haven't surrounded yourself with anybody who can pour back into you. You don't hang around with anybody who can teach you something new. Right? Not a good thing. Not good. Iron sharpens iron. So you have to hang around people and listen to things that will sharpen you, that will pour back into you, that will help you get to another level. This is why I don't listen to music in my car anymore. One of the reasons, this is why I'm constantly listening to sermons or I'm listening to things about what's going on in the world, what's going on in the United States, what's going on on a global stage, because we need to know, we need to be informed. But if you're hanging around people who are idle, people who are lazy, people who are undisciplined, it's not going to help us improve. How do I increase if I'm not hanging around or listening to things that will help me go higher? Right? So this is my takeaway. We have to sometimes make the hard call. We have to separate ourselves from people who are not going in the direction that we, we want to go. You know? Separate ourselves from people, places, and things. All right, so that's my takeaway from this morning. And don't grow weary in well-doing. When I pray, I always pray for God to continue to pour into you, Allison, because you always pour into... Thank you so much, Kimberly. And you know what, Kimberly? I have your card on my... <laughs> I have my card sitting right here to drop in the mail to you. So I, I so appreciate you. All right. Um, 
So that's it for this morning. Don't grow weary and well-doing. Use wisdom. Ask God for wisdom in how we deal with people, how we have to bring correction sometimes. Correction is a tricky thing. And if we don't know how to deliver it correctly, people won't receive it. I was just having a conversation like that the other day with somebody. I forget, but it was on that, that in that vein, you know, that we always have to have wisdom in how to deal with certain circumstances so that people will receive it. Oh, I know. I was saying that somebody had tried to, I'm going to keep this brief. I was saying that somebody had tried to give me some information years and years and years ago. I was back in my early 20s. And they were trying to give me some information and I wasn't willing to receive it at that time and from that person, right? So we have to be careful because what happens is now you close, that person will close themselves off to anything else that you have to say. And the information that they were trying to give me actually was correct. I just was not at a level of maturity that I wanted to receive it and I didn't want to receive it from the person that was giving it to me. And then I closed myself off. So we can't beat people over the head with information. Sometimes it takes wisdom because the information was actually right. I just wasn't receptive in my youth and my immaturity and um, the delivery and things like that. I don't want people beating me over the head sometimes, you know. You can tell me certain things, but it's the way that you approach me, the way you address me is going to sometimes determine the way in which I hear it and receive it and my willingness to hear it and receive it. Either you're beating me over the head sometimes or are you trying to edify me? Are you trying to tell me this for my own good? Or are you trying to embarrass me and make me feel like, why didn't you know? Right? So we have to just use wisdom when we deal with people. And the way you deal with them is, you know, sometimes going to drive the result. All right, everybody, it is 9.33, so I have to go. Grace and peace, everybody. Have a wonderful day. We finished Second Thessalonians today, so now tomorrow we're going to start yet another book of the Bible. So I'm so happy that we are rolling right through, and I have not... I have not given up, Kimberly. I have not gotten lazy in this. And so um, thank you, God, for, you know, keeping me on track and allowing me to be faithful in doing this. All right. Everyone have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Grace and peace. And I will see you tomorrow morning. Bye. And thank you. Thank you, Kimberly.